Hello, space friends, family, small star citizen babies looking to play this game sometime in the next decade. We got another uh, Inside Star Citizen this week. They always come out on Thursdays, so I always try to get these out to you on Fridays. And it's looking like we got a new ship coming to Star Citizen. We all kind of knew about it. It's a small fighter. Uh, it's made by Mirai, a new brand in the game. And it's launching tomorrow or today. So main thing we want to know is, can you justify it? It's a small ship. Most people can use it, so that is good. It's not a capital ship. It's not taking up a ton of time and effort. And it's also a lot more affordable and accessible to a lot more of the player base. So that's a positive. But does it actually fit into the lineup where it needs to? And does it actually define this brand? That's what we'll be looking forward to today. So let's check it out. Thanks for joining me. If you enjoy these, subscribe maybe. We do it all the time. Invictus is here, and for the next two weeks, we'll be learning and showcasing as much as we can about the new ships and vehicles making their debut at this year's event. And since there's nothing that I can say that's anywhere as cool as what you're about to see, let's just get right to it, shall we? We have a lot of ships and vehicles in our game now. They really did get straight into it this time. Keeping brands with a consistent theme is important because it helps uh, immerse you in the universe. You, you see a, a ship of a certain style and role and you go, that's that manufacturer. So having brands and sub-brands or entirely different brands helps strengthen that narrative. This is almost the same <laughs> thing they said last week, but I'm so much more interested in, oh, okay, previously on Inside Star Citizen. That would explain why. They do a really good job of this. It's it's really cool to me that you can see a ship and know who man, which manufacturer made it. And the same goes for weapons. The same goes for cities. The same goes for ground vehicles. It's pretty cool. And it keeps expanding. I like how much attention they pay to the detail of branding and the little subconscious things that you get when you're just looking at stuff and recognizing them. Misk is traditionally very industrial, very civilian. And we really like Misk styling as a brand. It made sense to introduce Mirai as their performance subdivision. There's a lot of possibilities for where we can take this brand in the future. And not only will Mirai be heading in new directions design-wise, it's also a great opportunity to go in unsafe directions that maybe Misk wouldn't have done themselves. Kind of blending of human and Xi'an technology already in Misk, and one of their charges is going to be taking it even farther. See now, that first minute of, of play is why I was kind of complaining last week, because we just got a replay. It's not a big deal, it's still like, I don't know, it doesn't feel necessary. God, this ship is small though. With the introduction of Mirai as a brand. This, this thing game, looks like it's smaller than a Nova tank. Is that confirmed? It's the perfect opportunity to introduce a more military uh, fighter to the lineup. And so we introduced the Mirai Fury. The Mirai Fury is extremely compact. Uh, it allows itself what to- What the f It's literally just like a cylinder with some, it's a cockpit with some engine strapped to it. Look at that. There's nothing else. There's just this little cylinder here, uh, allows, which I'm assuming it, houses all the components probably in the back. You can see here. I don't know if there's any storage on that, but self to fold up into as small a package as we could possibly make a ship of this classification. Yeah. The Fury is... Not even size for a quantum drive, apparently. A cockpit with some engines, some components, and some weapons strapped to it, to put it bluntly. So the Mirai Fury aims to take everything that makes Xi'an super impressive with all of its grav tech and ability to gimbal thrusters and be super maneuverable. It has really cool folding wings that allows you to get it into tiny ships. Hey, this is Squadron 42 music. They can't do that. So if you have a ship with a cargo grid or... Was that a freaking MSR? ...into tiny ships. So... Yo, this is the... Ha! <laughs> you can put this thing in an MSR? Oh my gosh. This th it's an escort fighter. Look at that. Like if you're doing data running in an MSR, you can have an escort fighter in your cargo bay. What the hell? If you have a ship, I guess that was already true. With though. a cargo grid or an area for cargo that's large enough and a, a door big enough to fit it in, you can get the no. ship on board and yeah, help okay. <laughs> uh, provide on-demand support from any attacks that you may find yourself coming under whilst out in deep space. Valkyrie. So See. Okay, so this is kind of what I was thinking would make this a reasonable thing to bring into the game. This is an escort fighter. I feel like this means they should add a small hangar to the, uh, to the hull. To so the hull C and up, I think should have like a small hangar in that back 
compartment it would make so much sense for something like this because this screams multi multi-ship long distance gameplay and that's what we're seeing in pyro i hope that's where they're headed with with an addition like this I wonder if they're going to keep doing more snub ships now. We haven't seen a new one like this in a long time. Some might look at this and say the Mirai Theory reminds them of another popular spacecraft. What would you say to that? Uh, I don't know what they're talking about. <laughs> I don't see any resemblance. So when you approach the Fury, you'll first notice this big glass dome that gives you massive visibility. And then the seat will pop out and come and oh, present cool. itself to you. A little bit like the Asperia Talon. It's it it I would love to climb into these seats more. I think that's it's it's really cool to see something like and this the, the way it like up. folds out like that. I'd love to be able to climb into it. It gives a much more immersive experience, but I understand why they have to do this animation needs and stuff like that. It makes sense. That is a cool cockpit though. Very cool. This reminds me a lot of that ship from Oblivion as well. And come and present itself to you a little bit like the Asperia Talon. So you get to look at this massive glass canopy, which is super helpful for the pilot. And when it's in like its collapsed mode, you get to see all the different underneath parts of the wing with all the, like the no step on it, where the maintenance guys would have to step on. You've got the component bays coming out the side of the body. Everywhere you go, there's just components everywhere. It's crazy how densely packed this thing is together. You've got air to air refueling for port on the top. You've got all your personal storage. Um, yeah, and the flaps at the back as well. We you guys notice how all of these features, if they'd launched a ship three years ago, he wouldn't be highlighting things like a fuel port or the component slots or the articulator, maybe the thrusters, but like there's, it's fun to, it's funny to see how every year there's something new that they're pointing out that they've added to the ships. Reminds you how many things they got to add to the old ships. Can't wait to get atmospheric flight in so those things can work for you. Um, the lights on the end of the um, wingtips as well that will blink intermittently, so they'll swap around. So when you're in transform mode, um, they'll kind of like switch which one's going. Alex did an amazing job on that. All around the back, these thrusters kind of presenting themselves to you in their gravity cradle that will flip up and down depending on whether it's landed on. It is a cool view. Being able to see the weapons like that right next to you, that's... Uh... It's reminiscent of the Sabre cockpit view, which is cool because you see the guns on your sides, but this is just full freaking view. This is going to be a great ship for filming with. That's what I'm going to use this for. Or not. When you're in atmosphere, you'll notice the bottom ones move more than the top, but once you're in space, that flips around. It's so maneuverable. You're constantly going to be throwing it around in directions it shouldn't be. You're like pulling stupid amounts of G-forces. So having that visibility is going to be really important, and it's something oh, we tried is, our best. This is the new meta racing ship, it's huh? not to compromise on. The view from the cockpit allows you to see pretty much the, the whole picture of combat ahead of you. Uh, you have fantastic agility to maneuver yourself around uh, threats, and it just looks really cool. Just the, the cockpit picture you have with the guns in your view all the time firing away, missiles launching right next to your head. It's a truly uh, unique experience compared to our other ships. We really tried to keep the hood as minimal as possible. That was something I spent a lot of time in white box designing, like the layout of it and stuff. And um, we ended up settling on like just like a small kind of like glass transparent panel of all the MFDs and the radar at the top. The flight controls fold out of the, um, the armrest. There's a lot of the radar. Misc over here. I want to see what he's talking about with the HUD because I missed that. Oh, okay. I see. Just the thing Spent coming out on the top. Spent a lot of time white box designing like the layout of it and stuff. And um, we ended up settling on like just like a small kind of like glass transparent panel of all the MFDs and the radar at the top. The flight controls fold out of the um, the armrest. There's a lot going on for people flying their ship. So, so here's, here's the thing that I'm still jury's out on. Ship looks great so far. I'm liking what we're seeing. Design language though, I'm, I think we're not really going to understand what it is until we get another ship from this brand. And I know they moved the Razor over to this brand, so maybe it's not super consistent, but these wings we're looking at looks anvil anvil to me that looks like something you could see on like a carrick I'll, i think people also said this ship looks like a carrick turret so i'd like to see this fleshed out a little bit more but i imagine things like the engines are definitely going to be a big part of what makes this uh design language kind of fold fold around mirai so the last thing we want is to like you know overthrow you with buttons area to actually shoot is tiny right this thing's like a real glass cannon it's got such a dominating small profile you probably 
look at it come towards you, like, oh, what is that? You know, it feels like a wasp, but you'll probably hear it hit you before you um, realize what it is. The profile of this, it's so aggressive. <laughs> I need to get back to filming. This looks like fun. It's like these massive triangle shapes, but it's still got that misc. Okay, yeah, see, I'm getting a little bit of like, I'm getting like a meld of Anvil and Crusader from this. It actually looks less less Anvil from this side. Up top, this definitely reminds me of Misk. I can see that there De with like, this looks kind of like the top of the Prospector. On the sides here though, super aerodynamic, super clean, very sleek. It's got that like sort of jagged, strong shape of Anvil with the colors and the silver and the dark, uh, like brushed metal gray kind of but it's also got the smooth curves of Crusader and then the engines of a, oh, this ship's growing on me. I have not been very uh, interested in this thing until this video, but, but let's continue. Go to it. So one of the things I cannot wait to see is when I'm stood on like Daymar or something and I look up and see like five of these things whiz past me at stupid speed. It's just really satisfying oh my to God, see the that would be cool. flying around, whether you're in it or on the floor looking up. Imagine not hearing any of the ships, though. They're like right there. You still haven't heard them. Right there. Still haven't heard them. And then now you see them. You're dead. You're screwed. Speed. <laughs> it's just really satisfying to see this silhouette flying around, whether you're in it or on the floor looking up. The Fury chassis is designed to support multiple variants, and we're exploring these over time. But we are introducing... An oh, it's a chassis. Oh, they did this with the Freelancer, they did, did this with the Razor, did this with the Reliant, did this with the... Uh, am I missing another one? Maybe not. Oh, what if they do an exploration variant of this? A little scout ship? An additional variant alongside the base version at Invictus Launch Week. The Fury MX uh, takes the core of the Could base Fury and simply replaces all the guns with all the missiles. The amount of missiles on the wings is just stupid. I remember being told how many we were going to be putting on it. And I like did everything I could to make sure like everything that was supposed to be a size two stayed a size two. I think we've got like 20 missiles on it now. And only like, I think it's eight of them are um, size ones. So yeah, have fun with that. It's the absolute Nova damage variants this thing is designed to put out the maximum amount of damage in as short a period of time as possible god imagine if combat just looked that like smooth i don't know how i feel about that i think this would be a really really cool variant if they released a missile update with invictus would have made a ton of sense we could have seen the, re the return of the gladiator we could have seen the rise of the eclipse and just all these ships that rely on missiles we know missiles have gotten improvements in the past even missile operator mode became a thing but it's been dropped mostly since then probably because a lot of the combat experience and, and teams that are focused on how combat feels are working on squadrons experience first but this would have been a great time for some kind of rework to missiles because a lot of people just don't use them they at times feel useless sometimes feel confusing um the interface is not really complete missed opportunity that's too bad on top of all the missiles, uh, we also add a deployable blast shield, which uh, provides additional armor to the front of the ship, whilst reducing visibility as the trade-off for that. Does it actually help? We really wanted to make this variant feel different, and that's... Carrick fans out there raging. ...exactly what we've got here with the blast shield. I just think it's awesome the way it comes down. We've got the little uh, Mirai boot screen as well, taking some of the inspiration oh, from some of the more cool. alien manufacturers as well. <laughs> that's that's pretty cheeky besides the fact everything aside from missiles and all that the idea that they had it boot up and have like a screen for the display is very nice I boot screen nice as well touch. taking some of the inspiration from some of the more alien manufacturers as well and it really gives it that kind of alien vibe like you can tell Gian tech's been involved with it when you look at it when it's blast shields down it's got all these cool sensors on the outside it just looks utterly terrifying and it's it's awesome so the mx is designed to launch from the parent craft uh, do one or more multiple um, missile attacks on larger crafts so you launch you commit to your run deploy your blast shield down and launch your payload and then get out of the dodge and return holy and crap utilizing all the tractor beam improvements in alpha 319 you can then rearm the ship and repeat to your heart's content we need pdcs
So the Fury is designed to compete against some of our most agile uh, and capable fighters, such as the Arrow and the Gladius. It does that by being much more agile uh, than those, as well as being a smaller form. It does have limitations there, it doesn't have a quantum drive, so its range is sort of limited around planetary bodies, uh, and ideally it is carried within other ships. The Fury doesn't have a quantum drive because there's not room. If we tried to put a quantum drive in this thing, it would have doubled the size of it, and then it wouldn't have fit in as many ships as it can. It's more maneuverable, it's faster, it's he more heavily armed. That's a nice, realistic limitation. I think it makes sense balance-wise, and they probably would have come up with another reason to not have a quantum drive in there, but that's a nice, realistic limitation that you get with this game, where they're designing ships that have to have an interior and exterior and have to fit all the parts, you have to trade up functionality for that smaller size to get a certain benefit. Those kinds of things in the long run stack up and lead to people making certain choices based on certain activities and all of the variables involved, which I think in the, is going to make the game play differently every time. Different combinations of ships, different combinations of components, all because there are going to be limitations that are based on not just like artificial barriers, but literal physics and stuff. That's always been a really key part of this game to me, I think. Uh, a, a big draw, and I'm glad to see that reflected in things like ship designs too. It's got everything going for it. My favorite thing about the Mario Fury is definitely the thrusters. We've managed to get uh, fully 180 degree rotating uh, main thrusters, meaning that we don't have uh, specific retros. This also means that it's got much more efficiency when it comes to turning and strafing. And That's a big deal because there's no VTOL needed. This thing's going to do fine in atmosphere. All sorts of uh, flight maneuvers because it can put its main thrust in pretty much whichever direction it needs Holy to go. Holy crap. See, they that's are a great so ship cool. to bring along as a sort of defensive package to allow you to react to threats coming at you um, or launch very short range uh, attacks on other ships. I imagine people who are using like eye trackers or like, you know, they're really like on it, like looking around trying to see what's coming up. Um, it's going to be super, super useful for them because you're in dogfights constantly in this thing. Ideally, you would bring multiple of these uh, and because of their size, you can load quite a lot in quite a lot of our uh, other oh ships. My gosh. A lot of players and a lot of people like to boundary around. The this is the meta ship for Star Citizen. They've got dang the Star Citizen community is obsessed with fitting ships inside other ships. Every single, single time a ship comes out, the first pictures you see are, what can we shove this inside of? What will it fit inside of? Star Citizen, all the devs got together and said, let's be the community for a day and make a ship that can fit in everything. Three of these in a Carrick? Are you kidding me? This is the same ship that we go and land the freaking Pisces inside of as a starter ship. That's nuts. It's a lot of our uh, other ships. A lot of players and a lot of people. The Pisces! I'm sorry. <laughs> just... People like to boundary around the words uh, pocket carrier. Well, th this is the ship for the pocket carrier. This is the ship that will fill the pocket carrier. It's the pocket fighter. In a fleet engagement, the Fury sort of takes on that very typical sci-fi trope of uh, the the larger fleet engagement starts, a ship opens its doors and all these fighters pour out of it. It is oh so small and compact that... <laughs> Who even took the time to put this together? Really, uh, bringing lots of them is no disadvantage. Where are you, CIG? I know, I see you. Honestly, I think uh, the old Elite Dangerous channel, talked to him a couple times, but the pilot, very, very good videos, great ship reviews, came to Star Citizen for a little bit, ended up getting hired by the company. I think he has some stuff, some of the stuff to do with this. I don't know. Just a theory. Advantage to yourself, you, you just launch them all out of the ship and they just cause oh. merry havoc. I really want like aircraft carrier vibes off this thing and at events like Xenothreat or Jump Town, you'll just be sat on the ground looking up, defending it and see this kind of normal sized ship coming no. towards you and you think, oh, we can deal with that. And then just furies come flying from all no. directions at you and you just don't know where to shoot. <laughs> and like, We're playing StarCraft now. All your ground to air defenses are like stretched because there's so many small targets fleeting around you. I, ju I just can't wait to see what, no what the way. community does with this ship. I'll be, I'll be interested to see if we can 
get these kinds of scenarios actually happening in game with ships like this. I look forward to hopefully getting larger groups together for this kind of stuff, but it's a lot of work in this game. This ship has a big place in my heart as it's the first vehicle I've worked on here at CIG. Good I had you, so dude. much fun designing Congrats. like all the intricate details and how it would fold away and how it would all transform when it's in deployed mode and I was so like impressed and amazed by how everyone from all the different departments brought it together so it was like this massive moving everything just seems to be moving constantly when you fly it around and it really feels like it's alive almost and it's really satisfying to just see how it comes over and I can't wait to work on more ships that give me that feeling. And Dude, hopefully everyone is excited about cool. the Fury as we are internally. It's been probably one of the, the most favoured ships internally during its development. Then we'll look at doing some more variants in the future. Careful there. So what did we learn this week? Well, we learned Mariah is making one heck of a first impression with the new Fury. That there are two variants making their debut at this year's event. And that good things sometimes do... Wait, what? That there are two variants making their debut oh. at this year's event. For some reason, I heard there are two ships making their debut, and I'm like, we don't know about the other. And that good things sometimes do come in small packages. And that if there ever was a ship that punched above its weight class, this would pretty much be the one. There's another classic Star Citizen trope. I said the thing. Yeah. Now, don't forget that Invictus Launch Week starts proper tomorrow, with all the festivities you're used to returning alongside with it. Uh, how many F-8 Lightnings are going to be stolen this year? We really want to know. Well, I mean because I definitely don't have anything wagered in that office pool that we definitely don't have going. And of course, enjoy the improved new player experience, lore build, tractor beam improvements, mining updates, new missions, and everything else the recently released Alpha 319 has to offer. For Inside Star Citizen, I'm Jared Huckabee. Thanks for exploring the process of game development with us, and we'll see you all here next week. All right, so, uh, we will be testing that ship out today. I'm going to release this video and probably within the next few hours after that, we will go live and I'm going to be testing out the Fury. I'll jump in with the Discord server. We'll try and get anybody else who has access to the ship, maybe picked it up, have access to it in the Invictus week and just fly them around, get a sense for how they work, how they play, how they fly, how they fight. I, I look forward to that. I'll publish some of that next week. But this was a cool episode. I'm not, I didn't go into this super interested in a new ship. Not the biggest when it comes to ships. I mostly don't cover ships, but this is an interesting one. Every once in a while, they put something out that actually makes a case for itself. And I think this one did. I would be worried about this making other snub fighters feel less useful. So I do hope that they could start to focus on gameplay that requires people to have snub fighters. That's hard. That's very hard because they can't just say, oh, we've got smaller places you have to fly and take your snub fighter. We, they got to... They got to come up with reasons for people to want to bring these ships with them. I think there are some convincing ones, but giving up cargo space for, I don't know. There's a lot that's going to go into balancing this. I think this ship will have to prove itself in game on paper. It sounds great in their own productions. It looks like it has some very cool applications, but overall the meta of this game and the way it's played right now doesn't match the stuff that happens in ISC. And I think that's just because we're, we're missing a lot of game systems and uh, and because servers are so small. So we'll have to see how, where this goes. I do appreciate what they did with the new dev. I'm glad that he got to work on this ship. That's an important point. I think probably this was one of his onboarding tasks to get him used to the ship pipeline, learning how to make all of this work, what the launch cycle looks like, getting him on ISC, getting him comfortable with the team. and bringing them more in depth with the ship team, I guess. I love seeing that. That's part of the process just as much as the actual design of the ship is. They didn't really go over how the ship was designed though. Hopefully we get that in Star Citizen Live. Either way, this has been long enough. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I'll catch you next week if you wanna come and see what else is going on with Star Citizen. And otherwise just uh, drop a subscription, check out the podcast, look at some other reacts. I'll see you around. Have a good one.